can't believe it, I'm out of solitary confinement. Hell yeah, dude. Let's chill. Let's chill in the yard, smoke some weed, and yeah, do the fuck I want, pretty much. Let's chill here. Okay, okay, okay. Let's have a join again. Fine, it's fine. Uh, what am I wearing? What is this even? A jumpsuit? Am I in prison? Yeah. It seems that you've woken up. The fuck are you? Um, could I ask you the same thing? Much. I just I just kind of woke up and uh uh and see what happened. Then you anesthetize you, okay. What? You'll get used to it. What? Um Which poison head somewhere else. Why not dude? Why not head here? Down here, my boy. Not here, not to the yard. But this one. And then let's head here. Yeah, buddy, let's head here, boy. That's the size. Don't overthink it. Um. But try to keep clues to yourself to remember the time. I don't know what you mean. No. Like, did, did, did they drug me or did they or knock me out? Or drag me here? Like, what's this place? Why? What is this shit we're wearing? Am I? Are we in a prison? Like, death row or something? No, if this was a prison, we would have been out by now. Just you signed your life away. That's all I can say. Video should I watch? Maybe buy some of his HD. Where is that guy anyway? Be buy some of his HD. 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 Bottomless HD Bottomless HD Bottomless HD Where's that fucking go anyway? Fucking What is mod?
Here we are, yo. Here we fucking are, yo. Yeah, buddy. Please support Australian owned business. Fuck off. They get a notification from their CCTV camera that there's movement in their backyard. No. They rush to check their footage. No. Why? They got the door all open and shit. The Night time. Cannot believe it, dude. Good night, prisoners. Let's head to bed. Good morning, prisoners. Oh, okay, so this is my yard because look this is my cell block so my mistake so each cell block has their own yard okay so this is my yard it's okay I guess it would do I'm not fussy or anything so yeah it will do basically Let's chill down here. Cheeks. So your best thing to do is don't be Peter gazing. When you go to the shower, keep your mother soap in your container. And so that's what that is. So you drop the soap. Now you're down low. And people think you're looking at their happy place. And if they think that you're looking at their happy place, then they about to put their happy place inside of you? What it is, guys. It's your boy Blasphemous HD. And today, we're here to check out a video called simply, Don't Drop the Soap in Prison. And a dude is about to tell us exactly why you should never do that and or join a prison gang. I've never been to hardcore prison. I was in jail for a while. You know, that wasn't that bad. We bathed in powder. They didn't give us no soap. And we got to bathe by ourselves. So we never had to worry about anybody trying to um, um, just shower with us. Um, unconsensually and in sex like ways but I'm pretty sure the people would love to know what we just gonna watch the video I'm new to this type of stuff I know I, I 
ain't know dropping the soap was a thing. I ain't know that just because I have loose grip on soap, that can mean you lose your anus. I don't even know what you lose. I'm guessing it's your butt cheeks. I hope it's not, but we gonna find out together. Let go. In the Fresh Out series, we've been getting tons of emails about prison life. So we decided to start this series to answer all those questions you have. Prison life can be a scary thing if you know what you're walking into. You can end up in a deadly situation or get fucked up. I'm Big Herc, and I served nearly a decade in federal prison. Damn. And I've seen and lived through some shitty times. And this is Prison Talk. Prison Talk. This is from another one of our viewers. I just got sentenced to five years. I'm not a gang member, but I heard that when you're in prison, you don't have a choice but to join the gang. Is this true? This is not true. I did my whole bid. I never joined the gang. I didn't, I didn't really run with nobody, but at the same time, I did eat and hang out with a certain group of people, and if something happened, I had to roll with those people. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to join a gang, but at the same time, if you have a, a celly that's involved in gangs, and he's your celly, you're going to have to back his ass up. If you sit at a table with a group of guys, and they're part of a certain car, you're going to have to roll with that car if shit kicks off. So, you do have to, to an extent, get involved, even though you don't want to be involved. It's inevitable. You know, unless you're just a guy who just kind of sits on your, sits off to the side and just eats by yourself and doesn't hang out with anybody. But if you hang out with somebody, if your boy has funk, you're going to have to back him up. And that's just how it is in there. But for the most part, you don't have to join no gang. You don't have to run around and do no bullshit unless you are associating with that shit on the street and somebody in there knows you from the street, then you're obligated. But other than that, if you weren't really fucking around on the street, then you ain't got to fuck around in prison. You know, it's pretty much you do your own thing unless you want to be involved in something. So those are choices you have. You don't necessarily have to bang, but if you want to bang, it's there for you. And once you get involved in a prison gang, you can't walk away. You're stuck in that shit. If shit goes down, you best have your ass on the yard. If you aren't on the yard, the homies are going to fuck you up when they get back off the yard. So the best thing to do is don't get involved in that because if they get involved... Every time something goes down on the yard, if there's a meeting, if there's any type of riot, if there's any type of uh, uh, lockdown, you're going to have to roll with the car. And if you don't roll with the car, the motherfuckers that brought you in are going to take you out. So be smart about it, and you don't necessarily have to join a gang when you go to prison. But watch who you socialize with and know your friends. You know, know who you fuck with. Real talk. Another one of our readers emailed and wanted to know, when you go to prison... If you drop the soap, what happens? Now, let me tell you something, man. Are you dropping the soap on the motherfucking streets? If you ain't dropping it on the streets, don't be dropping that shit in prison. Unless you're a motherfucking Peter Gazer. And what a Peter Gazer means that when a motherfucker's showering and he's walking around and his fucking butt naked, you're looking at dicks. Don't be up in there looking at dicks. Once a motherfucker recognizes that you're looking at his dick, he's going to think that you're on some punk time. And that's going to lead to him trying to get you to drop your soap so he can go up in the butt cheeks. So your best thing to do is... Don't be Peter gazing. When you go to the shower, keep your motherfucking soap in your container. And so that's what that is. So you drop the soap. Now you're down low. And people think you're looking at their happy place. And if they think that you're looking at their happy place, then they about to put their happy place inside of you? I don't. That's barbaric. Get a car. You drop your soap while in the shower, let that shit, let it go. It's, it's not that expensive to get another piece of soap. Let that shit float away and motherfucking stand up straight because uh, ain't nobody trying to see your ass. But if you're trying to show your ass up in there, motherfuckers going to recognize that maybe you're giving up them cheeks. If you're giving up them cheeks, you're going to get tested. You know, the first test is a motherfucker might slap that ass while you got your towel on. Now, if you just giggle, hee hee, and don't retaliate, and then the next move is for that motherfucker to come in there and squeeze your butt. And then from there, he might just come in there and just like straight like, hey, homie, you know what I'm saying? You got to let me get some of that. No. And that's how it escalates. So it ain't like they come in there and you just, hey, what man, the? you know, um, we're going to rape you and do all this stuff. Now, unless you're a punk. And I don't have nothing against punks. If you like it in the butt, that's your choice. But if you're looking for that, there's motherfuckers in there. As soon as you get there, they got some hard dick for them butt cheeks. You know, but if you ain't into that, you ain't got to worry. You ain't got to worry about motherfucking trying to take your butt, you know what I mean? So that's a lot of bullshit. Ain't, people ain't just getting raped. But if you're talking shit and you into that and you like 
put yourself out there, then a motherfucker might try you. He might be like, fuck it, man, you, you talking all this shit, and you know what I'm saying, you want to, you, you, you think you hard, maybe I'll just knock you out and take your butt. And that's happened too. I've heard a motherfucker getting, they, getting knocked out and getting their butt took because they were running their mouth or thinking they were super hard or trying to carry themselves a certain way. But um, other than that, man, it, it ain't, you ain't got to worry about that. You know? Is it bad that he's wearing a shirt that says sex addict? <laughs> While he's talking about a man getting ran up inside of from the back. Show it on people. Great, it's fucking shower time. Let's go into the fucking shower, I guess. The shower should be down here. And then this way. Here we are. Here. This place is the shower. Great. Dry off, dude. Let's wash my hands. Let's go to here now. Let's chill down here, my dude. Need to chill on the back. Yeah. Here, boy. Push pie, dude. I like it. Get up in there, get you a couple fiend bucks, beat your meat, you'll be alright, man. You ain't gotta worry about nobody taking your butt cheeks. That is so graphic. The way he explained that, I didn't think it would be this graphic. Uh, but, you know. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. Hug me, I'm scared. Because this video has frightened me. Blast Miss HD off. <clears throat> Let's have a joint. Why not? Yo, whoa.
In the States, it's said that over 600,000 people go missing per year. Those are actually insane stats. Where do those people even go? According to the Red Cross, over 100,000 people around the world are still currently missing, and most of them are usually just dead. Sadly, many of these disappearances remain a complete mystery, and families are left heartbroken. But it's not all bad. There are some missing people who end up being found, and we're focusing on the positives today. There's already too much negativity going around right now. We don't need to add to it. Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan. And I am your host, Avon Hassan. I hope you are having an awesome day. And today, Lindsay and Ames are bringing you the top 10 missing people who have found alive. Starting off this countdown, we have Gabriel Nagy. In 1987, 44-year-old father of two, Gabriel Nagy, left his home to run some errands in the city. A couple hours later, he called his wife, telling her that he was on his way back home for lunch. But Gabriel never returned home. I'd be pissed as his wife, like, I made lunch. Where are you? The sandwich yeah. is getting cold. <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> We should be laughing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, actually, no. I mean, it turned, yeah, it's well, fine. to add to this mystery, his car was found smashed in, abandoned at the side of the road, and Gabriel was still nowhere to Which be found. Smoke. This case went cold for 23 years. There were no signs of Gabriel anywhere. That was until police got a word of a man receiving Medicare whose record seemed to match Gabriel's. Turns out that Gabriel got into a car accident on his way home that caused dissociative fugue. He couldn't remember a single thing. Not knowing who he was or where he lived, he wandered around the streets for 23 years. That just baffles me so hard. He literally signed his life over after this car accident. Can you imagine completely just forgetting about your family and kids? Like, imagine how his family must have felt to lose him and then get him back. As soon as police found him, they started showing him photos of his family and he slowly began to remember who he was. Coming in at number nine is Petra Pazitka. It was July of 1984 and 24-year-old German university student Petra was expected home one weekend just for some family time. You know, family time as we do after uni. Just that home cooked food. But the girl never showed up, which prompted the police to start investigating her disappearance. Detectives turned to a popular crime show at the time for help and convicted murderer and rapist Gunther K was suspected for her death. He had admitted to killing someone in the area before and when provoked by the police, he confessed to murdering Petra as well. You think the story just ended there and that Bob was your uncle after that, but Bob is barely even a distant relative right now. It turns out Petra was alive and well and had intensively planned her disappearance for bed. Time. She had been going by different aliases and was renting an apartment with money she'd been saving for quite a while. The only reason she was even discovered is because there was a burglary in her home, which she reported to the police. When they got there, she told them her name was Mrs. Schneider, but they asked for her ID, after which she had to confess. Petra never came clean about why she decided to disappear to begin with and continued to maintain that she didn't want any contact with her relatives. That must hurt. As her relatives, I'd be like, hello, I just want to love you. In at number eight, Robert McDonough. Back in 2013, Robert McDonough, who was a 73-year-old man with dementia, wandered out of his home in Maine. When his family realized he was missing, they quickly reported it to police, who then led a 14-hour search to find the man. And just what people were about to give up is when a miracle happened. And the next morning, when ABC was about to report on the incident live outside of McDonough's home, is when he ended up wandering right into the shop behind the reporter. And thankfully, the reporter was then able to report a positive story, way different than he originally thought. Filling on number seven saw is Edgar Latulip. Now for some background, Edgar was mentally handicapped in a way which had him functioning as a 12-year-old kid. He had tried committing suicide multiple times and in 1986 he had just been released from a hospital following his latest attempt and he was put in a group home. One day he boarded a bus heading towards the south side of Lake Ontario and disappeared just like that. Or so people thought. Since he had tried taking his life before, the first assumption his family had was that the 21-year-old had just killed himself. But turns out that 